We're given a table of data and we want to find the recursive form of the function we'll, that will define this, this table for us. So the first thing we notice is that our inputs are increasing by one and our outputs are changing. So to get more information about this table, we're going to find the differences between the outputs. So 4 minus negative 3 is equal to 7. 21 minus 4 is 17. 48 minus 21 is 27. And 85 minus 48 is 37. If these differences were constant, then we would know that we had a linear function, but they're not. So we need to look further. We're going to look at the second differences and subtract our first differences the same way we did our original outputs. 17 minus 7 is 10. 27 minus 17 is 10. 37 minus 27 is 10. So now we see that we have constant second differences, which means that we have a quadratic table of data. Now the recursive form has two parts. The first part is really easy because it's just what is the first output at the first input. Our first input is 0, so when n is equal to 0, what is the output? And we put negative 3 right there. That gives us a starting place for a recursive because recursive always depends on the output that came before, and this is our first output. To write the output that came before, we're going to use f at n minus 1. Now we have to multiply or add or subtract or divide something to that to get to the next output. Since we know this is quadratic, we know that we're going to be adding something that's linear to that output that came before. So let's figure out what that linear part is. And this formula that we come up with right here is going to work for every n that's greater than 0, or whatever your first input is. So let's pretend for a moment that we have this table, that the first differences are our outputs, and our inputs are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then that means that our second differences would actually be our first differences, and that would mean that we have a line, that this output right here is linear, and we're going to take advantage of that fact. So if we were going to write an expression, that agreed with this output right here, we would know it had a slope of 10. We would multiply that by n, and then we would add the y-intercept, which would be 7. Now we're not using, originally, this as our output. This is our output, and we want this formula for this output. This output depends on the output that came before, which means that we're using the input that came before to get that output. So instead of using n right here, we have to use the input that came before, which is n minus 1. So make the substitution of n minus 1 for the n that you have there. Now distribute the 10, 10n minus 10 plus 7, and simplify your numbers. 10n minus 3, and this is the linear component that is added to the output that comes before to get the next output.